How did Black China even, that name, how did that name even okay, come about? Okay, so how Black China came about now, so it was in my transition. Um, I went to Cayman Islands one time. Mm -hmm. So so with Rhythm Star, we, we were good, and people started to, like, book us out of the country. Like, we went to, like, Bahama, St. Lucia, okay. um, Cayman. And I remember I met this guy named Richard Flores, which Richard Flores um, managed Stylogy. No, he's still in the business. One, still one of my good friends. Okay. Um, so what happened now is that I met him from the Rhythm Style days, and this no the transition point when I left Rhythm Style now going into Poison Dart, and then he got in trouble in Cayman, so he came up from Cayman for a little, and he was at his sister's house at Fort Lauderdale, and he was like, "I'm bored. I'm like, just come." And then he and I started Black China together. He was the Black, I was the China. But he left nice. shortly after that. So, like, when we did the first CD, he left. It, I guess he didn't know if it was going to blow up or not. But I, then I took the platform, and then it kept going. Mm -hmm. So so even when I met you, in you know, a Black Chinese was around at that time, you know. Even though you guys were playing Poison Dart. Exactly. But so was Black Chinese actually supposed to be a sound, or was it just no, supposed it wasn't. to be mixed CDs? It, it, it wasn't supposed to be a sound. So let me tell you how Black China got now. So it's like the first one, it just out of nowhere um, because I had to think about how things were done differently. So it's like everybody packaging would look the same. So I got this clamshell thing and then it was kind of hard to get it printed at the time if you didn't have right. the license. Yeah. So then I got my friend had a color copier. So I just went there, got the circles and then I color copied on it. And then I gave some to Reggae Wear at the time. That was a big shop that sold like Jamaican merch at the time. Got you. Um, and it just blew up from there. Like I'm talking like just because of how it looks, it just blew up. And, and this then, was number one. I'm talking, I don't know if it was number one yet, but it was just, mm -hmm. it was just like there was no CD that I was actually done like that. You know what I mean? That where the, every single mix was perfect. You remember everything up until that point was all done by Hanina. That's true. That's one hundred percent true. So this one, no, this one, I, I think I did it on ADAT. So even if I messed up the CD, um, I, I just rewind and then I correct it, and then no, I introduce something that no other CD was doing at the time: remixes. So I started to put those same remixes that you know on the yeah. CDs, but these same remixes on the CDs, Khalid were playing those. Oh, and yes. remember, Khalid was big at the time, so no. Yes. Because those mix C those remixes were on my CDs now, everybody's like, wow, these are the remixes Khaled play. And literally, that's how Black China blew up. And that's crazy. And so it was a win-win for all parties involved, where it's like, exactly. okay, I'm giving you the material, but you're giving me the notoriety, so then I'm going to be pushing it and making my money from the CDs. And hear this, and then the reason why I joined Poison Dart is access to their acapellas. <laughs> okay, that makes okay. Cause listen, full disclosure, I was talking to um Kirkusy a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he told me the original Black Chinese, like those bounties and stuff you're hearing, those were originally poison darts. Yes, they're the poison poking out. They're poison dart dubs. I even gave them to Kelly too. <laughs> 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 no, but he didn't mind because I also yeah. gave poison dart these remixes too. But it it's just over a period of time that it it. Black China just got bigger than Poison Dart, then um, I had to make a move, you know what I mean? And then Bobby was there with me. Me and Bobby were working on Poison Dart together, and then I'm just like, yo, let's not change anything. Just come. And we just we just did it. Keep it going. A lot of people... With Black China was originally started by me and Richard Flores, but mm -hmm. Bobby did not originally start Black China. But Bobby, I would say Bobby is an original part of Black China because we grew it together as a song. And Thank you. And and the thing is, no, I remember in 2000, no, my father passed away. So I went down there mm -hmm. um, and then word got out. No, this was by the time I was at Black China 4. Yes. And then um, all uh, I remember now going to, I was down Jamaica um, for my father's funeral and stuff. I ended up staying a little while. Word got out now that it was me. And then I remember going around to Master Lee's studio mm -hmm. and then the place just Crowded, like got crowded with all these artists now wanting to be on Black China. This is before okay. Black China had any dubs like that. The okay. first person that actually gave away a dub, you know, is Beanie Man. Beanie Man, the elephant man. Yeah. They didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because so, so then, no, it's like, um, 
they all gave us dubs and stuff, but the, the dubs them only said super dubs, Bobby Chin. And then I remember like I got the first set of dubs them now, and this was December 2000. Um, and then I remember like the next time now, like um, we're getting more dubs and we didn't know that it was actually a song. Bounty Killer pointed it out to me and said, yo, youth, Black China is the song. Yeah. Bobby Chin and Super Dubs are the selectors. And then me and Bobby looked at each other and said, oh, that said, <laughs> would you believe this entire time we never thought of it? <laughs> And so then, what did you think this black Chinese was? Yeah, because I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean? We're basically like young at the time, you know. And then um, it's like um, after that, like you would say like three months after that, black Chinese was a worldwide name. That's when we blew up in Jamaica. March, March 2001. Right. So from December, you got your first set of dubs in December. You remixed them. I guess you had put out a CD Right yeah. after that, yes, yes. that's where everything started to go. That's when everything started to go. And I think it, it just went, it went so fast. It went like 5 million miles an hour. Um, and definitely was not prepared for it. Definitely was not prepared for yeah. everything that came along with it. Um, and it was, it was, it was great at the same time. And then not so great. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusicut.com.